वेलकम टू द मास्टर क्लास 2022 ऑर्गेनाइज्ड बाय वुमेन प्लस इन जियो स्पेशल रीजनल ग्रुप एशिया एंड सब सहारन अफ्रीका टुडे इन डे फाइव ऑफ मास्टर क्लास 2022 वी हैव टॉपिक वन ड्रॉट असेसमेंट यूजिंग गूगल अर्थ इंजन प्लेटफॉर्म बाय मिस राबिया तबस्सुम Ms Rabia Tabassum Rabia Tabassum has been associating with National University of Computer and Emerging Sciences FAST since August 2003 She teaches different courses including applied physics basic electronics GIS remote sensing and digital logic design Besides teaching she was al- also holding some other duties such as faculty in charge of transport committee and student society nufast decs and sibss and cbs she is a member of disciplinary committee a course coordinator and a paper moderator she is a former member of nts subject physics committee she has done msc physics with specialization in electronics from university of karachi and secured third position She has completed MPhil Space Science from University of Karachi and currently enrolled in PhD Space Science. Her research areas are GIS, remote sensing, water resource management, drought modeling, conjective use of ground and surface water, machine learning. Her research profile links are given below. वॉटर So today it's my topic is a drought monitoring using the Google Earth Engine platform. So let's start with the introduction. The the drought uh, basically the drought is a natural disaster that is more influenced due to the climate change, the impact of a drought condition on the precipitation, soil and agriculture fields, water reservoir are analyzed to categorize the drought as a hydrological drought, which occur due to the low water supply. and uh, meteorological drought which uh, uh, indicate due to the dry weather, uh, weather patterns and uh, we have a agriculture drought uh, which uh, when the drought effect uh, uh, on the crop uh, and the socio economical drought when the water supply and demand is changing uh, and of the and it will be effect uh, on the various community so ecological drought occur when the natural ecosystem are affected by the drought google earth engine google earth engine is a cloud based app and uh, it is basically the combination of a multi petabyte uh, catalog catalog of the satellite images the geospatial data set with the world wide scale analysis uh, capability so the major significance of a google earth engine is the time saving and the quick processing we can uh, 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 download the uh, various images we can analyze the images we can uh, uh, apply the mathematical operation on these images and the result will be appear on uh, the google earth engine platform so uh, because of the easily available or freely available ability of the google earth engine and scientists researcher and developers are using the google earth engine to discover the changes map trend and quantify the differences on the earth surface this is just a glimpse of my project uh, i'm doing a research on pakistan and monitoring the drought and uh, using the google earth engine platform so before starting the google earth engine play, uh, google earth engine uh, 
code editor we just would like to uh, keep the just introduction of a vegetation and assist which we use to uh, monitor the drought condition so the basic drought index is, is a normalized difference vegetation index and the NDVI that is basically the quantify the vegetation by measuring the differences between the near infrared which vegetation is strongly reflect and the red light which vegetation absorbs. So we can easily compare the healthy vegetation and the stress vegetation by the reflection. So if the we consider the NDVI, basically NDVI is infrared, near infrared minus red divided by the near infrared plus red. So the value of NDVI is 0 0.72 when we can see this consider the healthy vegetations. Uh, in this condition, 50% of a near infrared uh, is reflection, uh, reflected and where the 8% is red uh, right is reflected. So the NDVI value is 7.72, which indicates the healthy vegetation. And if the uh, reflection of a uh, near infrared is 40% and red is 30%, the value of NDVI is uh, 0 .0, um, 0.14, and that is a very low value, and that indicates the stress vegetation. So this NDVI has a value minus one to plus one, uh, zero to minus one will be the water bodies, and uh, Above the zero will give the vegetation conditions. The near to the one is a healthy vegetation, near to the point one is the stress vegetations. Um, in uh, this uh, lecture, I'm considering the data set of a modest data, and uh, here I consider the surface reflectance of a eight day global 50 meter spatial resolution. And, uh, uh, we, uh, so I uh, consider the vegetation in this image is 16 day composite, one kilometer special resolution. So let's start with the Google Earth Engine platform. So uh, this is the website of a Google Earth Engine. Uh, we have a different uh, platform here. So in the platform, we have a code editor, we have a data set and explore documentation and etc. So first we uh, open the code editor window. This is the code editor window. And uh, uh, in the middle portion, uh, we write down the code and here uh, we use the JavaScript. And this is the save file, uh, whenever you write down the code, you can uh, save this code in this uh, file. So these all are the files which, which has some code. These are the documents. Uh, if you forget the command of any, um, uh, if you forget any command, then you can explore this. Here we have assets. Assets uh, window is for uh, downloading the external source uh, data set. Let's suppose you can upload the dev file, you can upload the shape file from your PC or some other sources, and you can also uh, upload the CSV file, image collection, and other folder. You can add a project in your assets also. So I have uh, uploaded my uh, Pakistan shape file, which I use uh, in this uh, project. So this is the Java script. Here is the output. The uh, in this window, inspect means if you want to click. Uh, any point on this map and uh, get the latitude, longitude, or any information. So the inspect will, uh, window will give you the uh, information about your click. So where you click, the information uh, will be appear like this. 
this is a console uh, console is uh, basically the result uh, keep the result so whenever you uh, draw the graph whenever you print something the console will show the result and if you want uh, to add some extra tasks in your code then the task will be appear here so further you can apply uh, or for example you can download any image or any map and the uh, command will be appeared in this task. So let's start with the, uh, for example, if I declare a variable a is equals to three and then print it, run it, the console will show the result. So similarly, we can define a variable, a string in this. So basically, this is the JavaScript. You can use this. So I'm just giving uh, how can, you can write the code here in this uh, window and the result will be appear in the console. So let's start, how can we monitor the drought? <clears throat> okay. So first of all, uh, I uh, consider the NDVI band of the modest product. Uh, basically, the modest products also contain uh, the NDVI product, vegetation product, that is NDVI. And this is the name of the modest product. So if you want to know about this product, you can search. You can monitor the detail of this product. This product has only the one band, that is the NDVI. You can import this data set and you can use a copy from this also. And there is an example also, how can you use this data set? So just import this data set by clicking this import button. I'm not clicking this import button because I have already uh, declared a uh, variable data set and image collection. Uh, in image collection, I declare, uh, I add the modest product and DVI. Then I filter. Uh, basically, when we use this modest product, there is a uh, lots of images uh, present in this. So we have to filter uh the time duration we have to filter any particular area so here i'm just filtering a particular time duration from uh, january uh, 2007 to march to 2007 so this is the three month data duration and then we declare another variable ndvi band and that will give you the uh, only band that is NDVI. So from this image, we select the NDVI band. Uh, basically this image contain only one band, uh, but we have to select this band. And then we print this band, uh, NDVI band. So this print will give you the, how many images are present in this. So the print command will appear like this in the console. So we have a uh, 10 elements in this NDVI band. So for this duration, total 10 images are present and uh, we can explore this images as, and all images contain only one band that is NDVI. So in next, we take the mean of all images. 
So it's up to you what you want to do if you are calculating the mean of the NDVI or the first image of the NDVI or in a particular selected image, uh, you can uh, give the command. So here I'm considering the reducer dot mean command for calculating the mean of all images and print means uh, NDVI mean. So print NDVI mean they will give you the only this image, which has only one element and one band that is NDVI mean. Okay, so for visualization, we have to uh, uh, give the color com uh, ramp for this map. So here the visualizations parameter we declare the minimum value is zero, maximum value is zero, uh, one. The platy is uh, consists of a color ramp. So we have a color code, uh, multiple colored codes that will uh, give you the color combinations uh, in which your map will be appear. You can select your uh, choice of color also by write down the name of the color. For showing the map, uh, we uh, use the map dot add layer command. We add the layer name that is the NDVI dot uh, means, and we should add some colorizations. Uh, uh, so color uh, visualization parameter that is color width, and we can also give the name of this uh, layer. So when we run this, because I'm using the modest product for the whole world, so that's why this is basically appearing for the whole world. But uh, if we want to select, uh, uh, if we want to uh, select a particular area of interest, we can find out the drought condition or the NDVI value for this particular area as. Um, as I have a, a Pakistan boundary, so first I import the Pakistan boundary from here. So click here. This will give you the Pakistan boundary. I change the name, area of interest. This is our area of interest. And then I declare a variable, Pakistan, NDVI Pakistan, that clip this area of interest. So the NDVI mean value, will be clear for this area. Here we add the layer. Now I of this layer and showing this layer. So the NDVI Pakistan will show you now. So I just run. Okay. Now, again, we have uh, 10 elements uh, of uh, all NDVI value for the particular duration. Then we take the mean of the NDVI image, we'll keep only the one band, and then we uh, clip the area for uh, the Pakistan. So here, the vegetation condition, uh, the Pakistan. So similarly, you can apply any area of interest you want. Next, uh, in this uh, code, uh, I will show how to calculate uh, using the reflective index. So, how can we calculate? How can we calculate the NDVI value by using the band uh, near infrared and red band? So, here we use this modest product, the reflectance. Uh, just browse. Explore this surface reflectance product of a uh, Google uh, models. So we have uh, different bands uh, from one to seven. So here we have a seven band with a different wavelength. 
This is the import button. So this is just for the exploring the product information. So we declare here the data set. Uh, and then we also use the feature collection of this. this. This is another data set of the feature collection. We'll give you the shape file of the all countries. So uh, if you want to consider, if, if you don't have any uh, shape file of your country, you can uh, take this uh, uh, feature collection and write down your country name and then you can uh, take this uh, shape file of your country. So here I'm again considering the Pakistan and the country name will be the give here. This is Pakistan. And uh, we take the area of interest by taking the geometry of this feature collection. And then we filter the models data and the uh, data set dot filter, date uh, dot filter date. Date uh, has been filtered from 2000, uh, October 2001 to December 2001. And then we filter uh, for the uh, particular area of interest. So this will give you the only this area and the state information, uh, the state state. Here, uh, basically we want to calculate the mathematical operation of uh, or the uh, applying the function. So here we declare a function NDVI that uh, will take the image and calculate the NDVI as a normalized difference between these two bands the band two and band one. And then we rewrite this band as an NDPI. And the function will re return this image by adding this band NDPI. So in next, uh, we filter, uh, we use this filter image dot map NDVI function. So we map this NDVI function in this filtered image. And this will give you again a multiple images for this duration. So if we want to calculate only the mean or median, we apply the median. Uh, here we are applying the mean value of the NDVI, the median. Or we can also consider the mean or median, whatever. So here the, we use the median, uh, NDVI map dot median. That will give you the only one uh, image. And then we take uh, the selected band. So here we take this image and select the NDVI band and then clip it for the area, our area of interest, Pakistan. This is the platy, the color ramp, and the visualization parameter, minimum value is zero to one. Platy is given here. And again, we add the map layer the name of the map layer and the visualization parameter give the assign the name of uh, this layer and DVI. And uh, we will also uh, print the NDVI map and the NDVI composite by comparing both of the uh, images. So whenever I run this, This is for particularly uh, for the Pakistan. So again, we have a uh, only area of interest is Pakistan. Uh, the image collection consists of a 10 ima 11 images and where the median of the image or mean of the image is contained only one band, that is NDVI and has a value from minus one to one. So further, if you want to export your image, so here you can export command, and export dot image to drive. Uh, you can um, further explore this command by considering this doc, doc, uh, doc window, scroll down. Yes, this is the score command. So you can export image, map, table, video, etc. 
So here I'm exporting the image. So for exporting an image, you can use this command. Uh, you can export this image to your assets, cloud storage, to drive also. So whenever you use to drive, that will uh, automatically save this uh, map to your Google Drive. So for this, you have to uh, assign the image name. You can write down the description. You can give the folder names and etc. So these all are the requirements. So here uh, we export uh, the image by applying this command export dot image to drive name of the image reception scale and maximum pixel that is uh, optional but you can use it. So whenever you run this in the task window, this uh, file will be appear. So you have to run this file. Uh, by clicking the run, the task window will be appear, the name of the file, and uh, you can give the uh, name of the folder here, format. So just click the run button, and the process will be start uh, like this. So uh, it will take a while uh, to save this NDVI. Uh, layer to your Google or this map uh, to your Google Drive. So you can uh, open the uh, Google Drive and uh, you can download this map from your Google Drive, which is automatically saved in your Google Drive. I, at the end, I'm very thankful to you for listening this uh, lecture. Thank you so much for joining to the day five of Masterclass 2022. Join us and grow your professional network. Register for our speaker database and show the world the great work you do. Put yourself out of your comfort zone from time to time. Get mentored and be a mentor and support the community. Speak up for yourself and diversity and be a factor of change. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, you can comment it in the chat box. Thank you.